Am I the antagonist for not giving up my bed for my boyfriend's daughter? My boyfriend has three kids, 12 female, 7 female, 5 female. A wildfire broke out by their house and the neighborhood had to evaluate, so I told my boyfriend to bring his kids to my apartment. I've known his kids for months and they're all great kids, but they're a bit spoiled. My boyfriend's oldest daughter has health issues and they were at the hospital getting her treatments when the fire broke out. The younger two were at home with their nanny when the fire broke out, so the nannies took the kids straight to my place and my boyfriend joined us an hour or so later. My boyfriend came in carrying his oldest because she was asleep and he didn't want to wake her up. He asked where he could put her down, so I showed him to the room that I had planned on all of the kids and the nanny sharing. Nanny is a live-in nanny and I guess she didn't have anywhere else to go. Room has two bunk beds so everyone has their own bed. He said he didn't want her to be in the same room as her siblings because she was going to need a lot of rest and he doesn't want them to bother her. I asked where I was supposed to put her and he suggested my room. I asked if he meant only for a few hours and he said no, the whole night. I asked where we were supposed to sleep and he said we can sleep on the pull-out couch. I said I wasn't giving up my room so his 12-year-old can have her own room and he left with the kids and nanny. Now he's saying he needs to rethink this relationship because I wouldn't sleep on my couch for one night to let his daughter rest without her siblings waking her up and bothering her. Edit, to everyone asking why I have bunk beds in my guest room, my brother and sister-in-law have four kids and I babysit one to two weekends a month. Honestly, this relationship will not work long term. There's other solutions. Nanny and 12 years old and bunk bedrooms, 5 and 7 on pull-out couch, you guys in your room. NTA, why couldn't the daughter sleep on the pull-out bed? It's not permanent. You have a pull-out couch. Let the sick 12-year-old sleep in real bed so they can get the rest they need to get better. Suck it up and sleep on the pullout. Have some empathy. Am I the antagonist for not letting my stepdaughter wear a dress to my wedding? I 32 female have a stepdaughter 14 female who I'll call Vivian. I have Vivian with my fiancé 32 male who will call John. I met John in December 2021 and we got engaged around two months ago. My stepdaughter was assigned as a male at birth. I have no problem with this. My husband has a harder time accepting this and it has led to some fights within the family. This week we had been making more plans for the wedding. I had already expressed that I didn't want Vivian to be a part of things like dress shopping or really anything bridal related because of reactions that would come from both sides of the family. Due to the fear of their reactions at my wedding I also asked Vivian to wear a suit to the wedding. Vivian has not come out to extended relatives yet. She has also not fully transitioned. This is because there are some members that would not like that and they may cause an outbreak. My fiancé and I broke the news to my stepdaughter and she told her aunt who doesn't like me that much and she caused an uproar on social media that the family members who are closed-minded don't have. My stepdaughter has been crying in her room the past few weeks. I feel this is absolutely ridiculous as she would only be wearing it for one day. And it shouldn't be that big of a deal because in her eyes clothes have no gender. I expressed my points to her and she called her mom to pick her up. Later that day she texted saying that she would rather not come to wedding at all. My husband and I have been worried because if she doesn't show up people are going ask. Her not showing up could ruin the whole wedding and don't want that to happen especially if I'm not even in the wrong. I do admit that I am a little angry at my stepdaughter for stressing us out like this. So Reddit, am I valid for anger, or am I just being an a-hole? My husband and I have been worried because if she doesn't show up, people are going ask. Her not showing up could ruin the whole wedding and don't want that to happen, especially if I'm not even in the wrong. YTA for that statement alone. You don't care that she won't be there. You care that others will notice and care. Gross, just gross. But also, how dare you claim to accept her? You are asking her to mask herself, to hide, to belittle herself. You are teaching her that she is unacceptable as she is. That she is shameful as she is. 
that others are more important than she is. Your daughter is worthy of acceptance as is. She is worthy of love as is. Do not try to disguise your tolerance or platitudes for acceptance. If you accepted her, you wouldn't be so cruel as to ask her to undo herself for what, let's be honest, amounts to a big party. Here's an idea. Don't invite the bigots to your wedding and be inclusive of your stepdaughter and support her to express herself without judgment. YTA. YTA, and you know it. Clothes may not have any gender. Your stepdaughter does. More importantly, she has feelings you are trampling eight different ways from Sunday because you care more about what the transphobic assholes you happen to share DNA with think than standing up for her. Why her father is still planning on marrying you in light of that, I have no idea, but hopefully there's someone she can finish out her adolescence with in a supportive atmosphere because she's clearly not going to find it with you. Clothes may not have any gender. Your stepdaughter does. More importantly, she has feelings you are trampling eight different ways from Sunday because you care more about what the transphobic assholes you happen to share DNA would think than standing up for her. Why her father is still planning on marrying you in light of that, I have no idea, but hopefully there's someone she can finish out her adolescence with in a supportive atmosphere because she's clearly not going to find it with you. Am I the antagonist for refusing to bring my nanny family's baby back home when they told me to? I, 27 female, have been a nanny for the same family for about six months now. It's a one-year-old baby girl and she is the sweetest baby ever. I thought the family was really nice and that we had a good working relationship until yesterday. I always take the baby on walks either around the neighborhood or we walk down to this cool shopping center where they have a little fountain and a bubble tea shop we like to hang out at. There's toys and games and she always has fun there. We walked down to the bubble tea shop yesterday and we're playing as usual. We're usually out for like an hour. When it started raining, it drizzled a bit so we went inside the shop to wait it out before walking back and then it started pouring like storming. It was awful. It rained for so long. I texted the mom saying, hey, it's raining really bad, so we're just going to wait it out, but we're at the bubble tea shop. She told me it was almost the baby's nap time and that I needed to head home now like usual. I asked her if she had looked out the window to see how bad it was raining, and she said, yes, baby, has a cover for their stroller. She will be fine. Please head back. I told her baby has a cover, but I don't have an umbrella or jacket and I'll get soaked and will have to finish out my shift soaking wet. I asked if she or her husband could just come pick us up and she said it's my job to do what she says. I told her I was not walking back in the rain. After an hour, yes it kept raining, her husband came and picked us up apologizing saying he was sleeping and didn't know we were out here in the rain. When we got back mom screamed at me saying how dare I not bring her baby home when she told me to and accused me of kidnapping. Dad said she was being dramatic but didn't really do much. She threatened to fire me and told me not to come in today and that we will discuss everything Monday. Was I wrong for not coming back? It was pouring. I didn't want to have to sit in soaked clothes for hours. My hair would get ruined. I didn't want to get sick like there's so many reasons I didn't want to be in the pouring rain plus it didn't feel that safe. I guess if I'm wrong, I'll apologize Monday, but my BF said she's being unreasonable and can't fire me for that. I feel like I should quit. It am I the antagonist? Edit, BF says she can't fire me for that because of my contract. She has to give me notice, six weeks, if she doesn't want me to work for her anymore or else she has to pay me for the time I'm missing. I also did check the weather, but it said it was raining way later that night. The sun was shining when we left loudly crying face. Mom also asks me to take her on these walks daily. I enjoy them, but a lot of comments keep talking about these walks as if they're for me. And yes, it was a thunderstorm. Edit, I just got a message from Reddit Care Resources because someone was concerned. Ick why they're concerned, but I'm okay. LOL, there's a mistreatment clause in my contract, so I think I'm going to quit based off that on Monday and take the payout until I find a new family. NTA, but I wouldn't want to keep working for her after that. Threatening slash accusing you of kidnapping could have serious consequences. It's scary how easily she went there. 
NTA, I bet she'd have complained if you or the baby got sick from being out in the cold slash rain. You made the smart decision. NTA. She is being dramatic and ridiculous when she accuses you of kidnapping the baby. You took the child out with her permission, plus how many kidnappers let the child's parents know exactly where they are and ask if the parents can pick them up? If the mother was truly concerned about her child, she would have picked you both up, woken her husband up, and told him to pick you both up or organized a taxi. I can therefore only conclude that she had no real concern for the child's safety and was on a weird mama bear. 1. Power Trip Completely unreasonable for an employer to expect you to walk through pouring rain in a non-urgent-slash-emergency situation, especially after being told the situation and actively refusing to come pick you and their child up. This woman didn't even offer you a warm shower and change of clothes if you got soaked. People are so monstrous, she's treating you worse than people used to treat their servants, which you very much are not. I'd get out of this family as soon as you can, I do have other options. Am I the antagonist for telling my parents why I hate my name? Okay, so basically, I, F-16, had three older siblings, John, Julia, and Jess. John and Julia are twins and Jess was about three years younger than them. Jess had a lot of medical issues as a kid, according to my parents. She was born too early and had a lot of breathing issues, etc. Two months before I was born, when Jess was four and the twins were seven, Jess died. I was never told exactly how, but I knew it had something to do with her medical issues. My parents were distraught, and when I was born, I was named Jess, after my older dead sister. See, the issue was that, being directly named after the dead daughter starts up problems. My older siblings refuse to all me by my name. They call me by my middle name or just don't refer to me at all. And as a kid, I always wanted to be friends with them, but they're a good seven years older and have apparently already bonded enough with the original Jess that they don't really want to interact with me. My parents are even weirder. They put photos of original Jess on my birthday and look like they're about to cry whenever they say my name. They constantly bring up Jess. If I get a bad grade, they'll go on about how Jess would have done so much better. Or if I said I was feeling sick, they told me that I couldn't be as sick as Jess was and to stop faking it for attention, don't even get me started on my parents' friends because they just keep giving me weird looks. I can't live out the shadow of original Jess, which sounds horrible, but honestly it's true. A few days ago, my mom found got a letter from my old school where they used the nickname Anna, my middle name, and my mother blew up on me. She called me ungrateful and said that I was ruining my sister's image and good name and destroying her soul or something. And I blew up on her too, explaining why I hated using the name Jess and how it was stupid naming me that and how I can't keep living in the shadow of a kid who died nearly 17 years ago. Harsh I know, but I was so angry. My mom, dad, family friends, and even my own friends are telling me that I'm the asshole here, that I shouldn't have gone off on her, but my siblings are saying that I said what needed to be said. And to be honest, I like having their approval, so am I the asshole for telling my mom why I hate my name? Edit. Reading the comments, I do have to note that I love my parents. They've been great parents except for the name thing. I don't really want to go no contact because they really are great parents. I need moving across the country for me because I found a performing arts school. And honestly, I understand my siblings as kids not wanting anything to do with me. If I was in their position, I wouldn't want to either. And also, all the names are fake. My name isn't actually Jess, but I do appreciate all the J name jokes. NTA, why would anyone name their youngest kid after older late sibling? And what image does your late sister have? She died at four. Your parents are projecting unhealthily and robbing you of your own identity. NTA, not even a little bit. Honestly, I think it's super twisted that they named you after her. They robbed you of your own identity because they hadn't processed their grief. NTA, you should have been harsher to be honest and said to her that it was sick of her to name another child Jess as though you were her replacement and that Jess is irreplaceable and you are your own unique person. The second you turn 18 legally change your name. That's it. They placed your sister on such a high pedestal that your whole life was overshadowed by what she had and hadn't done. 
How the hell would they know Jess would have been better than you at anything? It's incredibly unfair of them to have turned you into her replacement instead of properly dealing with the grief of their loss. I'm sorry that nobody in your family is inclined to hear and see you for yourself. Perhaps low to no contact in the future will be the way to go for your sake. Am I the antagonist for telling my sister my real baby comes before her fake one? My 17 female sister, Jenny, 13 female, is autistic. She's absolutely fascinated by all things baby slash child related, and I do think she'll make a brilliant mom someday, but for now she's an amazing extra set of hands when I need the help, and she also has a reborn doll, who she's named Erica, that helps her a lot on her most stressed days. I have a four-month-old daughter, so I gave plenty of the clothes my baby has grown out of to Jenny for her doll. I've also given her things like pacifiers that can no longer be used for various reasons and an empty formula can so she can make bottles. She used to use either flour or cornstarch, I'm not too sure. Recently enough she was complaining that it wasn't realistic enough for her anymore and she asked me if she could have some of the real formula. I told her no, and it was because I work part-time, so I'm on a strict budget and really couldn't afford to. Our parents can't afford to help out financially, and I am currently not receiving child support. I will be eventually, just not right now. Jenny was disappointed, but that was that. Another thing Jenny struggles with, likely due to her ASD, is a solid sleep pattern, so she's typically up all night, especially if she has no school like right now. It's not unusual to hear her pottering around the kitchen until the early hours of the morning. In her nighttime travels last night, she seemed to be up making the fake baby real bottles all night, and due to the amount of formula used, she definitely overfed the fake baby. She admitted to it straight away, but the damage has been done. I told her she can't prioritize wasting my baby's food to feed a fake baby and that my real one needs to come first. She told me it helps her cope and I told her I don't care about that. I care about getting my baby fed more than I care about her comfort and ability to cope. Our parents intervened at this point, and while they think Jenny was wrong for what she did and made a promise to try and replace the formula before we run out, they think I'm an asshole for speaking to my sister the way I did, especially about something she has a huge interest in. They told me never to talk to her like that again. Am I the antagonist? NTA Formula is expensive, and in a lot of places is still in short supply. NTA. It sounds like your sister knows her baby is fake. And you're right, she can't be taking formula from your real baby for her doll. You sound very supportive. Lock up the formula. That way, there will be no issue. No matter how realistic she wants it to be, she can't be using your baby formula. It's a total waste since it's not being fed to a real baby. And yes, your baby does come first before her fake baby since there are real needs that your baby has and she just used up one of them. That was very inconsiderate of her, especially if the baby formula shortage hasn't cleared up where you live depending on where you are. Am I the antagonist for telling my sister to focus on her own kids' names and worry less about mine? My sister and I are both pregnant at the same time. She's 30 and I'm 24. She has a three-year-old daughter and is expecting a boy this time. She announced her son's name back in April and told everyone that the name was set in stone so feel free to use the name and gifts and stuff if we want. I didn't announce our daughter's name officially yet. Some people know just because I was close enough to them and we were talking names. My sister asked me outright and I told her. It's Oceana and she was not impressed at all. She asked me what was wrong with a name like Elizabeth or maybe a little Beatrice or Margaret. I told her nothing for those who like those names, but they are not for my husband or me. She then said there's always Emily, Haley, Anna, Marie. I told her to stop, that we knew our girl's name before we even knew she was a girl and it wasn't going to change for her. She went into a FB mommy group and shared the name with moms and moms to be in there and wanted people to help her figure out how to change my mind. She went on a long ass rant about how my taste in names is terrible and how she's shocked I would like a name like this. 
that I am ruining my child's life. I am rejecting all the beautiful, lovely names of the last several years. That her backslash Gatha and backslash Eugene are going to be envied and hated by my child and all future kids of mine for their gorgeous names. Someone I know is in the group and sent me screenshots of the post. She made sure that stayed up top for over a week with all her complaints and rantings. She also had some people more than willing to help. The last time I saw her was three weeks ago and she was giving me more names to consider. Rosemary, Vivian, Francesca, Lillian, Martha, Geraldine, etc. I rolled my eyes and told her to focus on her own kids' names instead of mine and that she needs to get over it and stop ranting to the world. She told me not to be so dismissive of her and that I insulted her kids' names, which I did not. I just told her to focus on them. She told me I should not want to name my child something her family will hate. She told me I was rude to her and she had genuine concerns. Am I the antagonist? NTA, it's not like you are calling your daughter Caligula or MILF. Two kids I actually know. Oceana is unusual but not awful or offensive. If she doesn't like it, then your daughter could choose to go by Anna, which isn't short for anything, so no one will think to ask. Your sister needs to butt out. NTA, not her baby, not her choice, and you may tell her off for insisting after you told her to stop. That's also why it's tradition here to keep names a secret until childbirth backslash carrot backslash carrot. NTA, while I'm not a fan of Oceana, I find it better than Agatha or Eugene. Everyone has different naming styles. She should not have went on the group and shamed you knowing it would get back to you and then accuse you of insulting her. I am not sure if this is how your sister normally behaves or maybe she really was just trying to help, but I think she overstepped. She had her own chance to name her daughter, and now it's yours. I think the old people name revival is awful personally, and much prefer your chosen name to her suggestions. And even if I didn't, who cares? They are not my kids to name, and your daughter is not hers to name. She'll just have to get over herself. There are so many truly awful names out there that would ruin a future, but Oceana isn't it.